Hi everyone, this is Mitzi. Thank you so much for watching Mitzi TV. I know that it's been a while since I caught up with you guys. I've been busy trying to figure out, finish up grad school and um, get everything together for graduation. But I just want to thank you so much for joining me today and um, I kind of want today to be a little bit of an adventure with with both of us. Um, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out my career path and trying to figure out um, where I'm going at in, in terms of graduating in life, if you will. So today I want to bring you 10 tips, 10 ways to um, see if uh, you are an artist or and an Arthur. Me personally, I'm both of them, so who better yet to to tell different key signs to than a person that has those gifts themselves. So at first I'm going to give you 10 Arthur tips and then I'm going to give you 10 artist tips. So let's start with artists. We're just going to jump right into it. Um, so these are in no way, shape, or form um, orderly, saying like one, two, three, four. Um, you can take them, leave them wherever in what order you want them to be in. I have a couple listed right here, um, but again, it's whatever feels comfortable for you. So I'm just, when I look down, that's what I'm looking at, the list. So number one. So number one, you're constantly thinking about characters, plots, backgrounds, themes, different things that you can add or, or have in a book. Um, so me per se, um, even though personally I'm in school, but I'm always thinking about the next book, the next five books. What am I going to do? What am I going to say? Uh, protagonist, antagonist, how I'm going to build the characters and, and, and the climaxes and the resolutions. I'm, I'm constantly thinking about that in my mind. And um, for a minute, uh, basically, I didn't know that I was doing it until one of my friends challenged me to not write. Um, and so, well, not, not write, but to write down my thoughts. And so as I was doing that, I figured out most of the things that I was thinking about were Arthur related, were writing related. So that's one sign that you are an Arthur if you're constantly thinking about developing a book or a text or a writing, anything. Number two, um, when you don't write, you feel stifled, you feel compressed, you feel um, like you're in a box and tightened up. So in the morning, I have kind of like my daily devotions with God. And so basically what I do in the morning, uh, the way that I pray is that I write. And so in the morning, I'll just free write. I'll free write for like an hour or two. And I wake up extra early so I can do that because that's how I pray. I write. And so uh, whenever I don't do that, I notice my day is like all messed up. It's jumbled up and my thoughts are, are all out of ray and, and I can't think. So, and yeah, and I feel like stifled and compressed and I have to do that every single morning. I have to write. So if you're a person that feels like very stifled and compressed when you don't write, that's a key indication that you are a writer. Number three, um, you're interested in reading other people's uh, works, their books, whatever they they consider to be um, uh, an expert in that area. Right now, I'm reading Zona Hurston's books. Um, I ordered a bunch of them off of Amazon. I'm addicted to buying books on Amazon. I love to read. Now, I don't like to read everything, but I have certain things that I love to read. And when I fall in love with a writer, I fall in love hard with that writer. And, I, and yeah, it's yeah, if you are even in a writing community like Goodreads or, you know, you go in for a certain Arthur, if you love reading other people's works, nine times out of ten, you are an Arthur. Number four. That's number. I think I'm on number four. <laughs> number four. 
uh, you want to constantly improve your writing skills. And so what I mean by this, now I'm just now getting to the point where I want to like constantly improve in it. What I mean is um, pretty much like improve in ways to kind of uh, clear up your message to your audience. You want to be better. Uh, for uh, whoever is reading your stuff you want to be better you want you want to be better grammatically punctually um, clarity wise you want to be better me personally I want to start doing grammar uh, grammar lessons again doing grammar exercises to develop my craft and so if you're a person that's um, that constantly wants to up your game nine times out of ten you are an Arthur Number five. So number five, um, you look for the typos um, or the mistakes in other people's writing. And so uh, what I mean by this is uh, sometimes when I'm reading, I tend to tear, well, not tear other people's work apart, but I notice small mistakes and errors that a lot of people overlook. Um, and I'll be reading, like for example, I was reading Julie Julie Cameron's uh, The Artist Way, and I noticed a couple of typos in her work. And she's a brilliant writer, um, but my eyes kind of naturally flow and see uh, the mistakes. Um, and and that's not to be uh, condemning of their work, but I just I notice them more than other people who just tend to read to read. Um, I notice small stuff like that. And we'll get more into that in the art th the artist section as well, because that's another sign. Okay, number six, you have inspirational quotes everywhere. You have messages everywhere. Like the way to a person's window pretty much now is social media. So you can look at a person's social media and you can see everything that's important to that person. If a person lists a lot of cats and dogs on their social media sites like Facebook, you know that they love cats and dogs. Me, when you look at my Facebook or my Twitter or whatever, or my Tumblr, you will see inspirational quotes galore. You will see um, quotes that make you ponder, make you think. They're not like um, regular quotes like, um, have a great day today. They're more like, I, qu I quoted something off of Cinderella that the fairy godmother said, and uh, she said that um, mi even miracles take time. And so it's just something to make you ponder. It's something to make you think. It's not something that's straightforward. That's something that a writer would most likely do. Number seven, um, so this goes to into the challenge that um, my, my best friend, my god brother brought up to me is to kind of test yourself and to see how you feel if you don't write. And if you miss writing, that's an indication that it's important to you. Uh, they say, um, I don't, I can't remember that saying, fondness, um, separation makes the heart grow fonder. I can't remember how it goes, but the theory is, behind it is when you're separated from a person or a thing and you begin to feel some type of way, that means that you care for that person or that thing. So if you go without it and you feel some type of disconnect or withdrawal, then that means that that thing is really important to you. So I urge you to try that challenge as well. Try not to write for a week and come back to this video and then see if you feel the same way. Number eight, your room is a reflection of your writing style. So personally, um, I have a lot of quotes up in my room. Even in my, my bathroom, I have um, inspirational quotes like, you are enough. Like um, my, my friend uh, laughed at me and was like, okay, Mary Jane. Um, cause Mary Jane does that in, um, yeah, in being Mary Jane, the TV show, um, on my, on my wall, you can't see over to the side. It just has scriptures galore, um, and quotes that a normal person, uh, probably wouldn't bother to put up, but I find and hold meaning into it. Like one of them on here, let me just snatch it off. I mean, one of them, here's one, I'll, I'll read it to you. 
Because of the popular notion that imagination is fictitious, many people react automatically by thinking that such an experience in the imagination would be meaningless. So, again, words that make you ponder, make you think, um, are kind of signs that you are an Arthur. Your room is a reflection of your personality. So that's the main thing. When I step into someone's room, I'm looking at signs to see who they are. And nine times out of 10, your room is gonna, it's gonna tell on you. So uh, look around on your social media site, look around in your room and see what you, uh, what you have on your wall see what's in your living space and that is a huge indication as to what direction uh, or what gifts or what talents or what uh, passions you have in your life okay number eight no number nine people criticize your writing and so a lot of people like to think that um if you're not getting praised or you're not being accepted as a writer, then that means that you suck. And, oh, it's kind of bright in here, sorry, y'all. Um, that you suck. And I'll, I'll have to edit that. The, pe many people tend to think that just because people criticize your work uh, as an author or an artist, then that means that you suck. And it does not mean that you suck. It oftentimes either indicates um, jealousy in another person or the idea that maybe that person is trying to bring something out of you that they didn't, um, that they don't think that you've acquired right, right yet. So um, I have often been criticized since I was a little girl that my writing is terrible. Um, my writing is horrific. Um, no one wants to read your stuff, but that is an indication that you are gifted. Um, especially if someone goes out of their way to make it known that you suck, that means that you don't suck. So take that as a compliment. So, tip number nine, people who criticize your writing um, is, a, is a key sign that you are a writer. And lastly, number 10, you spend a lot of time doubting that you can actually be a writer. So that self-doubt and that, that, that resistance, I often like to think that resistance is a sign that you need to investigate. Um, resistance is like our greatest asset, like as humans that God is, has given us to uh, figure out where, what direction we need to take. Now, of course, some resistance is a human instinct uh, to kind of protect yourself. It's a survival mechanism. And then other res resistance is a sign that you really need to go forward in this area. So I would urge you to check your resistance level. If you are resistant, um, sometimes that is an indication that you are, in fact, on the right track. So now it's time to get to the artists. Okay. So as you know, I am a biblical and angelic artist as well. So we'll get started on that. Number one, you're constantly looking up images and collecting references. So what I mean by this, um, when I got my minors in uh, studio art in undergrad, uh, I was taught to paint and do things by references. So I'll have random pictures of people's ears, people's nose, their hair, and I will put them together in a painting. Basically, I'll be looking at multiple images and putting them together on a painting. And so I search for people's heads and people's noses all the time. And so if you're a person that is constantly collecting references, um, nine times out of 10, you are an artist. Number two, you have a particular style or artist that you love. Um, a lot of people will be like, oh, I love, I love to do art, but you can tell a true artist because they know 
who to look up for for that type of um that type of style or that uh, that particular genre my favorite artist is renee cox and um my favorite piece by her is uh your mama's last supper and so again uh tying into the fact that i'm a angelic and biblical artist i love to play with scripture and so I really I love the fact that she wasn't afraid to um, go into that area another artist that I love dearly is Faith Ringgold and uh, I love her play on color and line and style and um, yeah so you can tell an artist like if you ask a person so who's your favorite artist and they can't tell you that's an indication that you may not be an artist because artists tend to look up to um, certain heroes, if you will. Number three, um, you pay attention to small, small details. So what I mean by this is that um, basically, I remember a couple of weeks ago, my god brother came into town and we went out to dinner, right? And he um, asked me, is, was that our waitress over there? Um, is, is that her in the corner? And I'm like, no, that's like a completely different person. She had a cat winged eye uh, eyeliner going this way. Her eyes were a little bit uh, lighter of a shade of brown and she had her hair uh, tied back and it was such and such shade. Artists notice small things. And um, another instance, I was, I had a meeting with one of my professors and um and she was like uh meet me in such and such room and i'm like oh you mean the room that's across the hall from the peppermints that's on the stand in the front and she's like okay yeah because artists remember things like that they notice small details because small details are the things that make up a picture even small things like lighting if the lighting is off center off the off to the corner those types of things matter a lot to an artist so if you're a person that pays attention to small small details nine times out of ten you are an artist okay number four um, you have a craving for physical reference um, me personally, I'm not good with directions, but I'm good with landmarks. I can remember landmarks like no other. I need a mental image in order to understand something. I need an image. I need a reference. Someone can tell me, um, meet me at the Starbucks. No, I don't know where that is. Meet me at the Starbucks across the street from Publix. I know where that is. And um, many artists tend to think that way in terms of pictures, in terms of physical, physical references. So that's a sign. Number five, um, you're sensitive to nature. So I'm a person that's always loved nature. And I like to go outside and just look at the differences in the environments. For example, the blue of the sky is much different in October than in June. Um, the, the blue is much richer in October. It's much clearer. The sky is clearer. Um, whereas in June, in the south, it tends to be a lighter shade of blue. It's not the same. Um, but again, artists are very sensitive to color, to reflection, to nature, to the green of the grass, like things that people don't notice uh, are very important to us. Number seven, this coincides with the Arthur one as well. People tend to criticize your work and you can never get your work in museums. So I want to say this also. I've always been criticized as a writer but I have also been criticized as an artist uh, people that tell me that my work is crap um, people that close like I have never had my work accepted to a museum um, when you can't figure out if any doors are opening that is an indication that uh, you have a calling as an artist, especially uh, if you feel as though someone is attacking your work um, or is blatantly closing the door 
uh, to make a point. Um, sometimes it's an act of jealousy. And so you have to discriminate and discern the difference between jealousy and them wanting to bring something out of you that wasn't initially there. So that's an indication also when people criticize your work and they blatantly slam the door in your face. That's an indication that um, you are an artist. Number eight, your work is your baby. <laughs> so my work is my baby. And so a lot of artists will overcharge their work and overprice their work to the point where they know no one's going to be able to afford this. And they do it because they don't want anybody buying their work because they're so attached to it. Um, I have a sister in Christ uh, who purchased one of my works. I, I, I actually gave it to her. Um, and when she sent me that picture, I was just so relieved because it was like, my baby found a home. My baby is okay. And like, literally, that's how artists feel. We feel attached to our work. And so when we see someone who just throws a painting on the floor, like, or just throws our work on the floor, shoves it in the closet, it does something to us. It's our baby. It's our creation. So if you're a person that's very, very attached to your work, that is a sign that you are an artist. Number nine um, you could spend all day in museums. Now, museums are the, they're like the kid in the candy shop for, for artists. And so I could spend all day in a museum looking at pieces, especially um, different type of ex exhibits. Um, yeah. I could just stand all day. I could be there all day, especially when the openings happen, uh, the artist opening happens. Like I just feel um, very happy to go. Um, it's a spirit in the air in the room where you are excited. It's like you're opening presents on that day. That's how you feel when you go to a museum opening. Um, that's a sign that you are an artist. Yeah, and also to collaborate. I'm very excited to collaborate with other artists and, and, to, and I'm genuinely interested to find out about what they do and their craft and how uh, we can learn from each other. Yeah, I love them. I love museum openings. And number 10, it bothers you when someone does not appreciate art. I get so bothered when someone asks the question, Mitzi, can't you just whip up one of them paintings, you know? Can you just do, can you just draw me like a little something? And I just want to slap them because in my mind, I feel like, do you understand the material, the time, the effort, the hard work that goes into making this? A lot of people think that this stuff is easy and it's not, and it irks me half to death when people don't respect artists. So... If you are a person that, to get, that gets livid when someone does not appreciate art as a job, as a craft, as a work, as a part of ourselves, you get livid, that is a sign that you are an artist. Well, let me know if you um, want to add to this list or take away from this list. I know this video is awfully long. Oh. One thing before I leave, I forgot to mention one tip to kind of tie both of these um, parts together. And so one of them is to look back over your life for clues. Most oftentimes the things that we gravitate towards as children, as young adults, um, we, you tend to see a pattern um, and it kind of adds up towards the, you, you know, as your life goes on. So look over your life and see what things you naturally gravitated towards. Me personally, I know that I have um, always kind of gravitated to, to art and um, I even have one of my one of my um hold on one moment one of my paintings i did was when i was six years old and i didn't really think anything of it but i painted watercolored angels when i was six and so i don't know if you could see it but i don't know kind of a little bit so these are like watercolor angels and it has a bunch of like pointillism 
um, and it's like a million dots of like angels that are like going up a ladder and so I did that when I was six so I've always had like this natural gravitation to art again also with writing I kept a journal uh, since I could write I kept journals I I, I loved journaling uh, so that's something that never went away despite all the things that happened in my life um, those two things stayed and they stuck so uh, I would like you to ask yourself uh, what things stuck with me back then and what things stick with me now and look at that too I know this video is awfully long but I want to make sure that I give you all the information that you need so that you have um, some more tools in your toolbox to figure out what direction you're going let me know in the comment section below if you have anything to add or take away from this list thank you so much for watching Mitzi TV until next time see ya